In John chapter 8 and verse 12, the Bible reads, Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to From Sickness to Health. I'm your host, Rico Hill, and this is my co-host, the blue guy, also known as Sick Man. No time for all those. Here, take these, quick. What, what is this? Oh, what? It's sunglasses, sunblock, and a hat. Hurry, it's coming. Put oh. them on. Oh, it's but, coming, it's coming! What, 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 what is coming? The S-U-N. The sun is coming, and you're going to die of skin cancer. So you're concerned that I'm going to get skin cancer? You? No, not really. Look, but I am scaring these people to death right now. Play along, please. I'm not playing along, because if you're trying to conceal the fact that there are healing and health properties in the sun, then you know what? You got the wrong guy. Oh, no. Rico, your brain is already fried. You're not even making sense. I'm not making sense? You're telling people that they need to be afraid of the sun and not go outside and experience it, then guess what? I think something has happened to your brain. But we're going to tell you that there's absolutely healing and health benefits to the sun, and you need not be afraid of it. You don't have to be afraid of the sun. Or do you? Roll it. And welcome to the program today. This is From Sickness to Health, and I'm your host, Rico Hill. I thank you for joining us here in the studio. Today, we have a riveting program to share with you. We're going to be talking about sunshine or sunlight. A lot of misconceptions about this, a lot of myths. And joining me here in the studio to talk about it, I have Dr. Schubert Palmer, who is chair of the cardiology de uh, department there at White Memorial Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. He's also an author. He is a minister of the gospel, so we're going to perfectly blend these things together as we talk about health as it relates to sunshine. But also joining us, we have with us a good friend, Namiko Madden, who is a health evangelist, and he has some really insightful things from Scripture to share with us as well. So welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's jump right in, shall we? Yes. All right, let's talk about this. Sunshine. People are afraid of the sun, yes? Mm -hmm. People are, uh, it's recommended by a lot of dermatologists, some doctors put on copious amounts of SPF something or another to cover the skin, yes? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Before we get into all the things that we can share, the health benefits and some other facts about the sun, let's give we want, we want to be fair and balanced. Let's give our friend Sickness an opportunity to share some things, what he's found out. Let's hear from him. Thank you, Rico. Aw, look at her. Nice and cozy in the daytime because she worked all night. I love people that work all night. You know, those who work at night, they call it the graveyard shift. And there's a reason for that, because it gets you to the grave that much quicker. Those working all night and sleeping all day, they don't experience the healing benefits of the sunshine. And then when they do try and go into the sunshine, they take their sunglasses and their sunscreen to get this, block out the sun. <laughs> Sleep on, night owl. Sleep the day away. Back to you, Rico. Well, so according to sickness, I mean, people are, you know, they're working at night and they're sleeping during the day, they're not getting the benefits that you were just starting to talk about. So we want to, I think we should let those people know that there are some things that they could really benefit from by actually getting out in the sun. You were starting with some of the things that have to do with heart. Can you continue that? Yes, yeah, some interesting research that's just, right now they're still trying to sort out, is looking at uh, some of the, um, the effects between, say, vitamin D, which we'll talk about how the, it ties in with the sun, and how, what it has to do with heart disease. They have found that for in the non-Hispanic white and the Chinese population, if your vitamin D levels, which they generally have a higher 
level, baseline. And if, if their levels are very low, their chances of getting heart disease or heart attacks are off the charts. Interestingly, it's not the same with, um, with blacks and Hispanics, whose levels are typically low to begin with. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of information that's coming out now about vitamin D um, and its relationship to heart disease and a host of other things. Congestive heart failure, again, up my street. Uh, there is a direct link, and we're not quite sure how the link all works, but there is a very definite link. A link, those who spend more time in the sun have better heart health. Is that what you're saying? That would be what it would translate to, yes. Excellent, continue. Now, uh, whenever you talk about sunlight, and uh, you have to talk about vitamin D. It's like one of the most important elements. And the vitamin D is kind of interesting how you even make it. It is, um, it's the body makes it, it needs cholesterol. Oh, wait a minute, so it doesn't come from the sun? Because you always hear people, mm -hmm. if, we, if we had an in-studio uh, audience, if I had them raise their hand and say, how many of you believe the, the vitamin D comes directly from the sun? I believe more than half would say, yes, it comes from the sun. But it doesn't actually come from the sun. There's a process that takes place by being exposed to the sun. Talk about right. that as you go on. Right under your skin, as the sunlight hits the cholesterol that is there, it gets converted to, by a process, if ultimately to vitamin D. Uh -huh. Vitamin D as a hormone is if essential for a host of things. It, it um, slows down this, the growth of tumor cells, for example. Oh, wow. And we'll talk about this the interesting correlation between countries, or even here in the, you know, the United States where we're filming, where th there is uh, the winter belt season. You, you can see colon cancers off the chart. Winter belt season, what is that exactly? Well, uh, maybe I made up the word winter belt. <laughs> but <laughs> coming from California, you know, the rest of the country is winter. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, mm -hmm. When you look at Michigan and going across where you have long winters, yeah. you can find a direct correlation with the rate of colon cancer and a host of other cancers. So researchers started to figure out, well, what could, what could be happening? And, and it was obvious, you know, they, they took a link uh, as they traced the path, they found that the vitamin D itself, this kind of led to this research that has now tied vitamin D uh, to cancer prevention, mm -hmm. if you will. Wow, and you know what? It's interesting that you should say that because in just a few moments, we're actually gonna show a, a news clip that shows the value of sunlight and vitamin D in fighting cancer. But before that, we wanna continue the discussion. I wanna bring Namiko into the conversation. And, and there's some facts about sunlight and sunshine. Can you share some of those with us? Right, um, I did some research on sunlight because I was preparing a presentation, and one of the most amazing things is that we in science, or I shouldn't say we because I'm not really a scientist, but uh, science doesn't completely understand what light is. I mean, when you think about it, it's like it can make plants grow and it can kill bacteria. Wow. You know? okay. It can blind you, but it's also what allows us to see. And recently, one of the things that they discovered is that the wavelengths of light are actually, and this is not the heat, the actual light will energize your mitochondria. So your mitochondria are the, the, the cells, uh, excuse me, the battery, the powering engine for your cells, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so light energizes your mitochondria. Which minute. helps us to do what? Well, it helps your body, so, your body cells to operate. Okay. Your, your body's made up of the cells that it has, and the cells are all doing different things. And when you have more energy for those, when the cells have more energy, it's just better function. So I was uh, preparing a presentation because I wanted to know where um, the cancer rates were the lowest across the board in the United States. And you might be interested to know because this is your home state. Oh, okay. But uh, the, the state of Arizona across the board actually has the lowest rate of cancer. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This, this is confusing everybody because everyone's been told that if you're getting too much sunlight or sunshine, and if you're in a state where there's a lot of it, there's got to be a higher incidence of skin cancer, right? But hold on, hold that thought. Okay. Let's see what the news is saying, and then we'll come back and we'll pick it up there, all right? Okay. So let's take a look. We've known for many years that a lack of vitamins can lead to sickness, but now an eye-opening study is linking vitamin D and cancer in a way we've never seen before. Morning anchor Anita Bland explains why the common nutrient has never had so much potential. It's new at six. 
The studies just keep coming, the evidence mounting. Low levels of vitamin D are now linked to so many illnesses, from breast, colon, and prostate cancers, type 1 diabetes and asthma, to multiple sclerosis and heart disease. I even think of vitamin D as the fountain of youth, if you will, uh, in that it uh, allows us to age well. That's the hope, and nowhere is the evidence more compelling than here in this laboratory, completely devoted to research on vitamin D. Take a look at this flask. These are human breast cancer cells taken from a woman who had breast cancer. Now watch what happens when you add a potent form of vitamin D. They appear to just shrivel up and die. The longer they're treated with vitamin D, the more of an effect we see. What happens is that vitamin D enters the cells and it triggers this cell death process. It's similar to what we see when we treat cells with tamoxifen. A drug used to treat breast cancer now. And when researchers took human breast cancer cells and injected them into mice, well, the tumors in those mice given vitamin D drastically decreased or disappeared. Whoa, I am blown away. You mean to tell me, did you hear that? The longer someone is treated with vitamin D, the less chance the cancer has to stand against it. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It so is. why yeah. are we so afraid of the sun? And, you know, to get even more spectacular in my mind, is 20 minutes of sunshine, talking about the vitamin D that an average person would get, that would be the, to get that amount from eggs, you'd have to eat 100 eggs. Hmm. I'm sorry, it's like you said 100 <laughs> eggs. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting, you know, they measure the amount of sunlight in, um, or vitamin D in international units, is that right? Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I've seen that when you just get that 15 to 20 minutes of sunlight, it's like 10,000 international units. Precisely. And I think with supplementation, you can, you know, you can really only kind of get about 2,000 to 5,000, you know, in a dosage. Is that right? Well, they can sometimes make mega doses. You can make a mega dose with it. Then again, you have to be careful. You know. what, oh, what's the, what's the cautionary yeah. tale there? You know, you can have too much of a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Better to get it from the source and get it in the time that you need yeah. to get it. Right. However, and, and, yeah. and I would say also get it for free. Because sunlight is free and you don't have to pay you for know it. What? Whereas when you, when you contrast it with the, 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 the vitamin that you have to pay for, you understand you just definitely want to be easy on the, on the wallet. But what's really interesting, tying in with what we were saying before, is that your home state of Arizona is the state which has the lowest rates of cancer, according to the CDC, right? Uh -huh. But I thought about that, and I was like, that's interesting. I wonder why. And I did some more research, and I found out that Arizona is actually the state which has the most amount of sunlight hours in the year out of all states. Well, you know so, what? I can attest to that because it is, it is the hottest place I've ever seen. I never have understood why a place that gets so hot can also then get so cold. But <laughs> whether hot or cold, you've got sunlight. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. But I was going to say mm -hmm. earlier that it, the sunlight is free. It's mm -hmm. absolutely free. And I was looking at the cost of just buying the, uh, the vitamin mm -hmm. D supplementation mm -hmm. or supplements. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. And you can only get for, uh, some for a little bit of a time. So, right. um, so th we want to do what yeah. God has already prepared for us, and it is free. Um, I think what I just need to interject as ahead. a physician, you know, having said all that, you know, there are cases and, and uh, where uh, the supplementation is appropriate, it's indicated, you yeah. know, uh, sometimes just thinking of the, 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 where the weather does not permit to have the sunshine. Right. You need to do what you have to do, but you can't be free. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Doc, you, you just uh, brought up a good point now. Um, sometimes there's a need for supplementation, and, but better to get the free. Um, what would be an indicator? Now, can you check your vitamin D? Could you just know it? Or what do you have to do to, to find out? Remove the guesswork. Okay. You can check with have your physician or your care provider do a vitamin D level. And that's through blood work? And that's a blood test, simple okay. blood test. Yes. Simple blood yes. test. And uh, there are numbers, right? If you are somewhere between 25 and 50, that's a good number? The numbers are supposed to be like 30 to 100 or some folks might say 40 to 100. Uh, and uh, if, you're, if you know you've not been working, you know, for example, I, I work in the hospital, so a lot of the nurses, you know, graveyard shift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and in the graveyard shift, most of the time you go home, you never see any sunlight. I have had some friends that have been near death because their vitamin D levels were down to zero. 
or, and yes, they, they had to be in the sunshine and they had to get supplements in, in that case. But wow. the wow. point is it happens and it is one of the most frequently underdiagnosed conditions. Hmm. Because most people don't know their levels. Absolutely. Unless you ask your doctor to actually test for that, you wouldn't know. That is correct. Is that right? That is correct. So how much sunshine should someone get? Because we want to be balanced and we want to be, uh, you know, correct in what we're talking about here. But we don't want to tell people just go out there and spend all day on their yacht, right? Um, so <laughs> hold on a second. We, we, we want to make sure that people are getting, are getting a healthy, balanced amount of time or sun exposure and not something that's going to be unhealthy. So what are the right amount of times that you mentioned 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. Is that for everybody? No, it's not. Sunshine or sunlight has uh, the process with, you know, some folks come endowed with more melanin than others. The skin coloring. Okay. So the more melanin, the darker skinned you are, the, hard, the longer it takes for the sunlight to penetrate to get to, to do its work with the cholesterol under your skin. So, so doctor, mm -hmm. I need a little more than say Namiko, is that right? Actually, it's the other way around. He looks a little darker than you. So he needs more. Yes. Yeah, he needs yeah. more than mm -hmm. I need. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. And so. if you are fair skinned, uh, the 15 to 20 minutes is considered adequate. If you are darker skinned, then that might need to be you know, pushed up over, over half an hour or, or more to an hour. Ah, okay. Now, I want to continue this, but let's, uh, you know, we've heard what we are talking about here. We talked and we, we've gotten some understanding, but then uh, we looked at the news clip, got some understanding from that. We should revisit that. Uh, as it relates to cancer, but uh, let's see what, what people are saying on the street. Sickness is out there, let's see what they have to say. Now, I've got blue skin, you've got a little darker skin than I do, maybe I need some more sunshine so I can get some skin cancer. What do you think of the sun? Spending time in the sun. Um, Overrated, huh? Dangerous. Could be, yes. Could you know some people who've had too much a sun exposure? Not really. But right. you can, people can overdo it, yeah. People can overdo the sun, mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe we could tell them to stay in their office buildings all day long. Stay safe. You look at me like I'm crazy again, you aren't see, you? No, you need a certain amount of sun. You need a certain amount. You know what you sound like? You sound like my friend Rico. Okay. He likes to talk about sunshine oh, and how really? much we need. And I think he's crazy. And all these people around here? probably got skin cancer with advice like that. So you need to be careful. It's like practicing medicine without a license. Mm -hmm. You need to be careful with that. <laughs> what about this sunshine, though? All you guys got way too much sunshine around here. What's that about? Um, this stuff will kill people. <laughs> skin cancer. Look at that. That guy is suffering from severe skin cancer. That's the God. sun's fault. <laughs> All right, what about the sunshine? Mm. You ever get in the sunshine? Mm. Mm -mm. Why don't you like the sunshine? I don't want to get any this. <laughs> don't, you're tearing up. You know what? They might need a little more sunshine. Not! <laughs> Who needs the sunshine? It causes skin cancer. Doesn't it cause skin cancer? Yep. See? Too much bathing. Crystal clear. The sun is bad for you. Well, I think our understanding is correct. People don't really spend much time in the sun, do they? Hmm. They're afraid and, uh, you know, they're just, uh, a lot of people just aren't getting recreation, getting exercise, and if they do, they even are exercising in gymnasiums. So they're not getting sunlight there. I always say you get the triple threat when you go out, you get some fresh air, you get some exercise and some sunshine all mm -hmm. at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Okay, let's, let's get back to what we were talking about though because sun exposure and the amount of time and all that and different hues also play a part. But then we saw in the news clip and you mentioned that vitamin D has an effect on the fighting of cancer because it, it's, it's actually shoring up the immune system, isn't it? It's doing that and it's slowing the rate of growth, actually shrinking the rate of growth for, for certain cells, the tumor cells. Wow. So this really is a clear point that, um, that people need to get sunshine. But should, should they go out there all day long and to the point of almost like worshiping the sun? Because some people do that, you know. Some people go out there and they spend the whole day and they, they just don't, you know. So what about that? Or they might spend that? it in the tanning salon just to have the same effect. Right. Dangerous. Too much Why? of a good thing. Melanomas tied directly to, to sunburn. Mm -hmm. uh, deadly cancer. Uh, basal and squamous cell cancers. These are the ones that are connected to overexposure to the sunlight. Mm -hmm. So 
like so many other things in life, there is a benefit. You could drown from drinking too much water, or you, you could have problems from taking too much of something that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want to always make sure that we are being doing things in moderation and we're being temperate. Yeah, and I may this. add one more thing too, and because uh, sometimes when folks say, I'm gonna go out in the sunlight and enjoy this, and so you put on your skin blockers. Yeah. Well, if you're putting on your skin blockers, okay, if you're gonna be in the sun for three hours, but that means that your body has not gotten any benefit from being in the sun as far as vitamin D goes. So you, if you want to get the benefit, you have to allow some time for the natural sunlight to fall on your skin, and this can only happen, you know, unblocked for a short time, at least for your 20 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So someone who's really, really dark, though, they probably need to just be exposed to the sun without any kind of block up to maybe 45 minutes to an hour, maybe? Maybe. Really dark complexions? Mm -hmm. Because I noticed that sometimes you'll find that in the African-American community that there is very, very low rates of uh, or levels of vitamin D. And mm -hmm. it's... You know, it's yeah. typically because we don't like to go out in the sun. Some people have theories about that. We don't like to hang out in the sun too much. But yeah, um, yeah the average level is around 19 in the African American community. It's around 30 or so in that neighborhood for uh, white, and uh, Asian is around 35. Hmm. 19. Mm -hmm. The then, normal levels being 30 to 100. So that would require some supplements, wouldn't it? It would require supplementing it with being out in the sun to begin with. Uh huh. And you take it from there. So you never want to go straight to the supplement. You want to go to the source first. That's how I like to do it. I mean, I, I write for, pres for pills, but I, you know, I, I have a heavy heart every time I write a prescription. Well, not so heavy because I need the work. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to the source because the Bible actually shows that the sun was important. God created the sun. He, he spoke and it stood up in the sky and it's been there ever since, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. And when we consider that when... God took Adam and he placed him in a garden. I always like to say he put him in the eastern part of the garden. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why he put him in the eastern part of the garden? Catch Which, the sunrise. The sun right. rises mm -hmm. in the east, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is a little indicator there in Genesis that God had, he knew something that a lot of us don't know, mm -hmm. that Adam was going to need that burst of sunlight to actually uh, keep him in a healthy state. And the studies show that the, the earlier part of the day is when you get the best benefits for the sunlight. I think they call it blue light. Mm -hmm. Blue light where there is the ultraviolet the ultra rays mm -hmm. entering into the eye and mm -hmm. all that it does in terms of uh, setting the, the, the clocks of the body. It's serotonin stored in the eyes. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. And not to mention, oh, I should mention it. This is a program. We need to talk about it. Um, but we need to talk about the fact that there's something called liquid sunshine, liquid sunshine, chlorophyll, mm -hmm. chlorophyll. Again, going to the spiritual aspect of this, the, the, the sun actually is this, this process called photosynthesis. This is how our plants grow. And they store up the energy from the sun and then they transfer it to us. So again, in the diets that God gave in the Bible, the first one being fruits, nuts, grains, and seeds in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29, we see that he adds the leafy herbs or the greens to the diet. Mm -hmm. And chlorophyll was a big part of that. So again, God is doing something with sunshine and sunlight for our health. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he shall be like the sun of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. Mm -hmm. So we see that there's some, some spiritual applications that can be made. What do you all think about this? Yeah, uh, one of my favorite texts is uh, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, uh, which is a message directly for this generation, which says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And as we were just discussing, that's physical light, but I believe it's also spiritual light because an unenlightened person definitely won't make the right choices as pertains to their spiritual and their physical lives. So God wants us to experience both, not only the S-U-N, mm -hmm. but also the S-O-N. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Getting from sun worship, S-U-N worship, to worship, like S-O-N worship. Well, I think we can conclude that 
We don't have to be afraid of the S-U-N, and nor do we have to be afraid of the S-O-N. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of have to have your spelling right on this, you know what I mean? But nonetheless, we're talking about two entities that give us warmth, give us heat, it gives us life, yes? And healing. And healing. There's healing in the sun. There's healing in the sun. In fact, we quote it, mm -hmm. Malachi 4.2, which says that the son of righteousness shall come with healing in his wings. And it spells it S-U-N, but we know it's also the S-O-N. So until next time, we invite you to tune in for another program where we will be talking about how you can live a healthy life according to God's word and good science. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks. In Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible states, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness rise with healing in his wings. Friends, we need not fear the sun, neither should we revere it or even worship it as the ancients did. However, a healthy, balanced respect for the sun is necessary. Now, when God says, he that fears my name, well, he doesn't mean that we're supposed to be afraid of him in the traditional sense of fear. No, he's talking about reverencing and standing in awe of his power and majesty, his name. Why? Because when you consider that big ball of fire that's in the sky, it is just a faint representation of his power and glory, not to burn you or burn you up, but to heal you to warm you, even sustain life as we know it. So we should reverence and appreciate his name because he created that great big ball of fire for our benefit. In fact, you can go out and you can experience the sun, not only the S-U-N, but the S-O-N, sun. Both of them have healing powers. Well, there you have it. You don't have anything else to say? Nothing else to say, as long as people are using sunblock, sunglasses, and hats like this. I think people will be no, just fine. No, no, fine. no, no. Please, keep your stuff. I've had enough of that. The thing is, is that your whole scare tactic is not working. Oh, it's working very nicely. People in their cars, on their way to work, in the house, all day, they're never out in the sun. I think I'm winning. Well, regardless of what he just said, our bodies were designed by God to sleep when it's night, but during the day we are to be awake, outside, enjoying and experiencing the wonderful benefits of sunlight. Well, that's our show for today, and I'd like to leave you with this as always. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Go out and experience the sun, both of them. I'm Rico Hill. And I'm the blue guy. Maranatha. Psst, psst. Feeling cold and lonely. Need a little light. Need a little light, oh man. Like the word says, men prefer darkness rather than light. Guys, no, oh, who turned the light? Who turned the lights off? Need some light. Need some light. So thank you. Thank you. Sunlight is good. Sunlight is good. Maybe Rico was right. Sunlight is good. Sunlight. Who got the lights off? Got them back on? Ah. Oh, thank you. Sunlight is good. Sunlight is good. Oh, sunlight is good.